Hey, hey, what's up guys and gals? Welcome back. I'm Mike, and this is the Ultimate Tech Hub YouTube channel. And today, we're building another beastly computer. This beastly computer is being built for the owner of Sin City Productions, one of the greatest photographers and videographers in the greatest city in the world, Las Vegas. Sin City Productions is also known as Sin City Photo underscore on Instagram. So make sure to give them a follow or contact them if you need any photography or videographer work. So now let's build them a computer they'll never forget. Damn, bro, holy shit. To build a beastly computer, you need beastly hardware. And here is that beastly hardware. This is the Z790 Aorus Elite AX, which utilizes the Z790 chipset. Our CPU is the 14th Gen i9-14900KF. Our GPU is the RTX 4060 Ti. But wait a minute, this GPU is pretty good, but it's not great. I think we can do better. This is the RTX 4070 Overclockers Edition, which can handle anything you can throw at it, which means it can handle 4K video editing. And we're rocking 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM at 6,000 megahertz. And did I mention they have RGB lights? Yeah. And our hard drive is a two terabyte NVMe SSD. Our power supply is at 850 watt from a company called Red Dragon. Did I mention it's got some cool RGB? Yeah. And lastly, we have our CPU cooler. This is the Coolmaster 240L. And did I mention it's got some ARGB lights? Yeah. <laughs> and to make it look pretty, we have power supply extension cables. Freaking sweet. And lastly, our PC case is a K2 from Ustex. It's got front and side glass panels, which is great because we're gonna show off all this beastie hardware. So let's start building. The Z790 supports the 12th gen, 13th gen, and 14th gen processors. And the Z90 socket is the LGA 1700. And this motherboard also supports dual channel DDR5 RAM. And if you're concerned about storage, well, this motherboard has four M.2 connectors for your NVMe SSDs. And the Z90 also includes PCI Express 5.0. And this motherboard also includes a smart antenna, which means it's Wi-Fi 6E ready. And the antenna is even magnetic, which means it'll stick anywhere on your PC case. The CPU you are installing is the 14th Gen i9-14900KF processor which has 24 cores and 32 threads and is up to 6 gigahertz unlocked. And you will need a CPU cooler to keep this bad boy from overheating. The Vengeance DDR5 RAM provides onboard voltage regulation it also has custom Intel XMP 3.0 profiles. It also has fully customizable RGB lighting. And this DDR5 RAM provides maximum bandwidth and tight response times. Our NVMe SSD is the Western Digital WD Black 2TB SN770 with maximum speeds up to 5,150 megabytes per second. Wow. Now it's time to get this motherboard installed into the PC case. Let's open the K2 and see what's inside. This PC case is all black with a front and side glass panel. I guess you call it a panoramic PC case. This case includes six RGB fans. At the top of the case, we have a power button, a reset button, a type C connection, and two USB 3.0 connections. And it also includes this magnetic filter. I gotta say the Musetex K2 looks very sleek. I love the black with the glass panels. And I think the glass panels have some sort of smoke tint. It looks pretty cool. The side glass panel is secured with four screws. And the other side panel is secured with two screws. And to my surprise, all of the wiring in the back is very organized. Bravo. And this box contains all the hardware for the installation, like screws and connectors. Let's get this motherboard installed. This motherboard has a built-in IO shield, which is awesome. So installing the motherboard is super easy. And while I'm doing this, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. It helps the algorithm, thanks.
So now it's time to install the CPU cooler radiator. And we're going to install at the top of the case. So first I'll remove all three fans. And this is the Coolmaster 240L. And this is a two fan radiator system. The Coolmaster includes two ARGB radiator fans, instruction manual, the radiator with the CPU pump, and all the wiring and hardware. This cooler is compatible with many LGA and AM sockets. And the Coolmaster also includes thermal paste. So first things first, we're going to attach the fans to the radiator. And make sure to install the fans with the wires going towards the back of the case. By doing this, it keeps the wires away from the fan blades, and of course, it just looks better. And I just want to give a quick shout out to all our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for supporting our channel. We really appreciate it. And you can support our channel for $2 a month, which gives you awesome benefits like one tech support question per month, and automatic entry into any of our giveaways. And of course, a personal shout out on every video. So head over there and sign up for $2 a month. It's super easy. Thanks. Okay, now that we're done installing the fans to the radiator, it's time to install the radiator to the case. And we're gonna install the top of the case with six screws. And make sure the radiator is pushed all the way back at the end of the case, as far as it'll go, because we'll need room for this third fan. And FYI, I could only install two screws in this fan, but they're screwed in really tight, not going anywhere. Now we'll attach the pump bracket to the back of the motherboard. We're using the Intel bracket, obviously, and we'll use four screws to secure it to the motherboard. Now add some thermal paste, I use the hourglass configuration, then attach the pump and secure with four screws. When you tighten these pump screws, you want to tighten the bottom left and then top right and then bottom right and then top left, kind of in that rotation. It's the same concept as tightening bolts on a tire. Now it's time to install the power supply and we have an 850 watt Red Dragon with cool RGB lights. And this power supply is fully modular, which means no extra wires will stick out of this power supply. Only the wires you need, and that's it. And the back of the power supply has the LED button to switch LED modes. And here are the connections for the power supply. They're all labeled, making it very easy. And here are all the power supply wires. And you get plenty. So don't worry, you're not going to run out. So I always set up my power supply outside of the PC case. It makes it a lot easier. So we'll connect all the motherboard connections, any SATA connections, the power for the GPU, and whatever power connections we need. Once we get this all connected, we'll then install the power supply into the PC case using these four screws. Now we'll attach the case wires to the motherboard and we'll use these instructions to attach it to this connector. It's very simple. Then we'll attach the connector to the motherboard. Now we'll plug in the audio and the USB type C connection and the motherboard connection and the USB 3.0. Now we're going to attach three fans to the bottom of the case in the intake position. I just recycled two of the fans from the top of the case 
and one fan from the back of the case. I felt like it made more sense to have three fans in taking air from the bottom of the case, and the rest of the fans are all exhaust. Now at the back of the case, I'll connect those three fans to the daisy chain of the other fans, and I also daisy chain the radiator fans as well, and then I'll plug all the fans into the fan control on the motherboard, which is located at the bottom right of the motherboard. The CPU fan connects to the PC fan connection on the motherboard. The two radiator fans are daisy chained to one connection, which connects right here. And after you daisy chain the RGB lights from the radiator fans, that one RGB connection connects right here. So now all of your wires should be installed. Now it's time to install the GeForce RTX 4070, which includes 12 gigabytes of GDDR5 VRAM. The 4070 includes 184 tensor cores, 184 texture maps, it also has a whopping 5,888 CUDA cores, and its boost clock is 2.48 gigahertz. And the RTX 4070 outperforms the RTX 3080 when it comes to ray tracing performance. And the RTX 4070 offers better performance than the RTX 3070 when it comes to 4K video editing. It's about a 15% improvement, not bad and you'll see a 40% improvement when it comes to GPU rendering. So in the simplest terms, the RTX 4070 is a badass GPU. And as a bonus, you only need one 8-pin power connector. Pretty cool. And speaking of power, the max power consumption for this GPU is 200 watts. Let's get this bad boy installed into the PC case. It simply snaps into the PCIe Express 5.0 slot. Attach the GPU to the case with two screws, Plug in the one 8-pin power connector, and bam, we are done. Now it's time to load up Windows 11. And the best way to do this, and easiest way, is to make a bootable USB drive. So plug a USB stick into your computer, and go to the Windows 11 download page. And then download Windows 11 installation media, and then place it into the USB drive and then launch the installation. This takes about five to 10 minutes. And while this is installing, make sure to hit subscribe. It's completely free. Thanks. Then once you're done, take that USB and plug it into your new PC. So power off your computer, plug in the USB stick, then repower your computer. Tap F2, go to BIOS, and verify the USB stick is the boot priority number one, and it is. Save and exit, and now it will boot from the USB stick. And we can install Windows on the computer. And we're gonna install Windows 11 Pro. So now that Windows 11 Pro is installed on our new computer, it's time to run some benchmarks. Let's see how badass this hardware really is. So first things first, we're gonna run Cinebench to test the GPU. And that score is amazing, unbelievable. And we're also gonna run this test. It's called Fish Benchmark Test. The RTX 4070 runs amazing. And let's test out some 4K video. Looks great, super smooth, and the GPU runs quiet even with the fans kicked on. So now we're gonna benchmark the Intel i9. Once again, a phenomenal score. And next, we're gonna test our NVMe SSD. And these read and write times are awesome. And for our last test, we're gonna run PC Mark 10. This test will test everything on the computer, all the hardware. And once again, we got a great score. This computer is truly beastie. So now, the last thing we have to do is to hand off this computer to the owner of Sin City Photo, my good friend, Berto Rivera. And I'm guessing he's gonna love this computer. Let's Come find out. In. What's up? What's up bro? How you doing? Good, man. The computer is that way. And there it is. Bro. I know, sick, right?
Well, I'm kidding, it looks just like an aquarium. It does. <laughs> it does. Oh, man. It's freaking sick, man. I'm glad you like it, dude. I love it. Yep. It's gonna be better than my lady. That's right. <laughs> it's gonna make you some more money, man. Oh, yeah, this thing. So guys, that's it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and for God's sakes, hit the bell icon. And we'll see you in the next video real soon. Peace.